All right, so I hear the Agir is probably going to be coming to the game. It was spotted in testing, and that is Siegfried's half-sister ship, so it made me feel like this ship could be worth revisiting, as they are going to be quite similar ships in a way, albeit at different tiers. The main differences I would care to talk about for now are the main battery armament. Siegfried, our tier 7 super cruiser, has six 380mm guns like a Nisenau. The Aegir is going to sport 9305s, if I'm not mistaken. Siegfried sports a massive HP pool, strong armor, a solid torpedo armament, and great sonar. It doesn't really have a strong reputation, though, in World of Warships Legends, so why should we care about the Aegir? Now, before this match, I won't lie to you, I had played a grand total of four standard matches in the Siegfried, and she has been in my port since the campaign, I don't know, was that a couple years ago? I just didn't vibe with the ship. It has a low barrel count and a very long reload. This kind of reduced the fun factor for me quite a bit. So, for this video, I played several more games in her, and I'll throw my stats up on the screen for the total of... 11 battles. I know, <laughs> still not a lot, but it was enough to give me a feel for the ship now in 2023. And honestly, this is not a bad ship at all. And with some of the recent commander updates, we can make a decent case for Siegfried being a moderately competitive contender at tier seven. Now I say moderately competitive because tier seven, when it comes to cruisers, it has some of the most egregiously overpowered boats in my opinion. Let's just look at the Wichita CE Ochakov, Suzuya, and the Mines. These are some of the worst offenders. They make every other cruiser feel lackluster. They just have an unparalleled ability to deal damage and to survive. They're ultra maneuverable, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's just part of it. But if you're looking for a challenge and a different way to enjoy Tier 7, Siegfried is worth the revisit. While currently not available for GXP, it's likely the ship will return at some point because it's not exactly overpowered. The match in the background is getting underway, and it's on the tiny version of Land of Fire, so we chose to definitely, definitely not push. A smokescreen let us know that a Fiji was parked, ready to do some farming, and with a well-timed radar from our Ochakov, we lit that guy up like a Christmas tree. And this is one of the strengths of Siegfried, and that is punishing cruisers. Now this match is going to show what to do and what not to do in the Siegfried, and I will happily point out where I screw up in this one so that you can be better than me. Let's check out the build. Dispersion, Propulsion, Concealment, and Gun Reload. The commanders I tested, I tested all of them, and there are a lot of commanders that you could throw on here, but I'm gonna go with old Gunther Legends. He has gotten a repolish in the last update, namely a new skill in slot four that is going to buff shell grouping. Also, Fortified got a little bit above buff. You could enjoy some more HP. I don't think it's worth it. I would rather use Velocious instead. Currently, inspirations for the game in the background were Membelli and Rigerwald to buff the reload a little bit and throw it all together in with Legend's base trade as well. The AP hits for a respectable 12,300 per Citadel, which is actually better than half of the tier seven battleship AP Alpha. So that's pretty interesting. The good parts of the ship, I'd say they're great. Look at the survivability, for instance. This is the toughest cruiser at tier 7, overpins not included. And if I'm honest, it's not really a cruiser. It's a tier 7 Nisenau, plain and simple. The health pool is the best at the tier, and the armor scheme is arguably the best as well. I know, I know. A 26mm bow, it's large and it's green. But hello, we have a 90mm upper belt. That is so unnecessarily over-engineered, it's very, very German. <laughs> but it is a really, really good armor value. Not going to find that on any other cruiser in the game. The Citadel is slightly raised, but there's a turtleback scheme. It's going to protect you at close range brawling. The deck is 30 millimeters. That is great at tier seven, and it will protect you from heavy BB AP. Like mentioned, though, the bads of the ship are the huge 26 millimeter bow. There seems to be a lot of health up there, and it's very easily easily citadeled through the front and pinned by 380s. I get it, that sucks. It tends to draw a lot of damage, even if you know how to properly armor angle. But that's not all. The heals are very good, over 9,000 health apiece, making this the one of the best tier seven cruiser heals that is not British. So you really have a rather tanky ship here. Now all of this means crap if you cannot deal damage. I think Siegfried is actually a pretty effective damage dealer, but you just can't play like a normal cruiser, and I'm going to get to that. 
The 380s are identical to what you would find on Bismarck, except they're way more accurate. You get a 2.0 Sigma and Battlecruiser Dispersion Ellipses, so a smaller circle where the shells can fall, basically in a very layman's way to say it. At longer ranges, the accuracy won't feel great, but the closer you get to enemies, it's going to get pretty darn effective. And in close range brawls, I feel like the Siegfried shoots laser beams. The Nagato later on is going to uh, demonstrate that for us. On to the reload. It's slow. Sure, you're not going to win any DPM fights. Siegfried is in dead and last. And I would almost never shoot HE. One look at this chart will show you why. The barrel count and the reload just are not there for HE spamming. Yeah, you can occasionally fire some HE off to peg a DD or start a fire here, but really this is an AP-centered ship with strong alpha, like we mentioned earlier, and good armor penetration. Siegfried is a boat where I think you have to be patient with your salvos. Pretty selective with your targeting, and you also might have to have good aim. Other cruisers are going to rack up damage through shooting, 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 setting fires, etc. Siegfried will garner damage by being positioned right and waiting for that perfect shot that can deal catastrophic damage to enemies. So that means actively searching for crossfires or setting them up with your teammates. You do have torpedoes. They're pretty typical German brawling torps, so don't get too excited about them. They do come in clutch if you're being rushed for starters, and in 1v1 situations where you can isolate enemy BBs, they are very, very helpful. Now, two things worth pointing about Siegfried that are pretty great that you might not expect. One, AA damage per second is in seventh place at tier seven. So that's pretty cool. And I guess it does stand to reason when you think about it. This thing is the size of a Bismarck, so it better have some good AA guns strapped to the top of it. Concealment. It's actually better than the Hipper, the Prince Eugen, the Mines, or the Mine CE. 13 kilometers flat, I do believe. And with my build, it gets down to a healthy 11.7 kilometers. And that is not bad for a big, massive girl. And it goes hand in hand with her playstyle. It's a ship where you can use your stealth wall. Well, it's a ship where you have to use your stealth to get into better firing positions, to smack broadsides, and to also go dark when you're being heavily focused. So let's look at the gameplay right now. First off, I say don't shoot HE, and here I am shooting HE. Well, that's just to show you guys how crappy it is. <laughs> I mean, not really. I was kind of testing it out, but honestly, the AP wasn't going to do anything to a JB from here. Maybe get lucky and knock a turret. Anyway, so we're trying to set some fire, deal some damage when I really don't have any other good targets to shoot at. Now, the other thing, I really need to be going for B cap because we're getting double capped and our team is just collapsing into this little corner back here where I spawned. Um, pushing two battleships in open water is usually not a good idea. Even if you are in the tankiest cruiser at tier 7, it's probably always a bad play. But, again, I didn't feel like I had any other options. I couldn't go unspotted to go for B, and our team was collapsed into this corner. So I felt like I needed to make a push towards these two battleships up here to maybe give my team some uh, breathing room to go for A. So anyways, we're pushing these guys to take their attention off of our teammates. Uh... Let's see if it's a smart move or not. Now, the speed of Siegfried is actually really good. This is a massive ship, but she does 33.5 knots, which in my opinion, again, you need. Look at this push through open water. You have to have a fast ship, and that is why I chose full speed ahead, Velocious, and Carl von Muller as an inspiration to get the speed up closer to 38 knots with the speed flag. I believe. That helps you get into and out of trouble pretty quickly. Oh, and you're able to run down solo ships with your torpedoes if it comes down to it. So again, we're in a really poor position right now. We're getting shot from a Wichita in the middle of the map, so let's turn our guns towards him, see if we can blap him while we tank damage from JB and the HE spamming Nagato up here. Overall, I am surprised by how much I am enjoying the Siegfried, way more than I ever remember before. It's the reason that I only had played, you know, three games. It's like one game a year, <laughs> basically, in the Siegfried. Now, I do feel like we have a lot of these super cruiser style ships in the game now, from Alaska to Carno to Siegfried, and then the Aguirre that is coming. And while Siegfried is not the strongest contender by any means, I think it does have a very unique playstyle, and if you underestimate it, a good player could make you pay for it. Lutjens now is a very strong choice for this ship, and uh, with the Commander rework, I think it's a solid option to breathe some life into the Siegfried. 
Overall, I still would likely not give this ship more than three out of five stars in terms of sheer power, but for how enjoyable it is to smack your enemies around while playing a cruiser that has obvious disadvantages, it's very, very rewarding. And like my beloved Napoli, I relish the opportunity to run down an enemy battleship and unleash a whirlwind of torpedoes. It doesn't happen very often, I guess, or it doesn't happen every game, I suppose, but when it does happen, it feels real good. So here's the point in the game where I should have been shooting this Nagato the entire time, but honestly, I just wasn't uh, respecting him because he's been slinging HE. But let's see what these guns do at a little closer range is. 5.6 kilometers, we shoot, and while we die, we get another Citadel in the high cal and take him out of the match. So I do feel like these guns are pretty saucy at closer ranges. Now, in terms of what we should expect from the tier eight gear, which assuming it's coming to tier eight, sounds like more barrels, more volume of fire from 305s, and likely worse accuracy, I would say, but it does sound like an interesting ship. And on PC, it looks pretty mediocre, but still strong enough when played correctly. Why are we getting so many supercruisers at tier 8? Kronstadt, Carnot, Agir. Well, maybe because it's a hard counter to the most powerful ships in the game, which are light cruisers, which will undoubtedly be coming to the game as well. These caliber guns are perfect for dealing kill shots to light cruisers while being on platforms that are agile or stealthy enough to thwart HE spam, as maybe a larger, slower, less concealed battleship would be easier to farm out. I don't know, it was just my opinion, something that I thought about. What are your thoughts? Be sure to leave them down below. I would love to hear from you and do me a favor, hit the like button if this video provided any value to you. Be sure to subscribe for future videos so you don't miss any content and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.